So the first thing, the name SIBO implies small intestine or intestinal bacteria overgrowth, right? Um, again, it's a complex subject matter, so I got to just kind of, uh, kind of gauge myself so I can kind of communicate things in a fashion that's appealing to you. Um, so, you know, the, the GI system is, you know, when we, most people have gastric problems, right? So let's go through the symptoms of, of distension, bloat, pain, uh, constipation, diarrhea. People say everything that I eat, I feel like I'm pregnant. I just get distended. I get no relief. Uh, I'm trying all kinds of diets. Uh, doesn't make a difference what diet I'm doing. Just everything I'm putting in is creating these reactions. I don't know what to do anymore. Now I'm avoiding eating food and now I'm losing weight and I don't want to lose the weight because I'm eating the food, but I don't know what to eat. And I, I it's, it's confounding and I get it. It's, it's problematic. Um, and so then, you know, what do we do? We go see a gastroenterologist. Um, and once again, I always kind of say, you know, jokingly um, that in our Western medicine, right, we have a lot of ologists, right, for every department. And so if we're having gastric issues, we see a gastroenterologist, right? If we're having neurological problems, we see a neurologist. So obviously we have gastric problems and we see a gastroenterologist. Uh, and, and rightfully so, right? But what do they typically do, right? They're going to just do scoping. They're going to do an endoscopy, right? So they're coming in from one end, right from the mouth down, or they're going to do a colonoscopy from the other end up. But they're going in there with cameras and they're just looking. But And for the most part, really what they're looking for is a disease, right? Pathology. And that is appropriate too, because you want to rule out pathology. Right? You want to rule out certainly cancer and polyps or things of that nature, right? Or rule out a, uh, an ulcer, um, right? And then you have autoimmune issues like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Um, so it's not that having those tests done is not appropriate. They are appropriate, right? We want to rule out pathology. But all too often, right, is those tests come back and the doctor says, everything looks fine. It looks a little flat up and they give you names. So the first thing they'll say is things like gastritis. Right. So what does that mean? Well, anything that ends in ITIS, ITIS means inflammation. Right. So gastritis means that your gut gastric environment is inflamed. That's it. And they kind of shrug their shoulders and say, you got gastritis. Right. Um, now, because the SIBO thing is kind of in everybody's uh, wheelhouse at this point is, you know, they want to identify SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So before I get into the testing format, so I'm not saying that SIBO is not real. It's very real. But the question is, is it being diagnosed correctly? And then if it's not being diagnosed correctly, is the treatment protocol the correct treatment protocol? That's really what we want to kind of get to, right? So you have to understand that the gastric environment is really complex, right? I know we like to think of things simply, and we talk about it with a word like gut, and that just kind of encompasses everything but it is way more complex than that. Yes, it's a long tube, right? It starts with our mouth and it goes all the way down into the esophagus into the stomach, right? And then it kind of loops around and it's called the small intestine. And it got different regions with different names to the small intestine, right? And then it kind of migrates into the lower GI, which is the colon or the large intestine. And then out it goes, right? Not the other end, right? But we have to understand that the, this, this long tube is incredibly dynamic and it's kind of regionalized, like different areas of this entire long tract are anatomically different. Uh, the bacteria that live in these regions are different from region to region. Uh, the thickness of the lining is different in the upper GI than it is in the lower GI. I mean, the mucus layer is different. Um, there are different oxygen gradients, right? The, the higher up you are in the GI, uh, you have a, a higher oxygen concentration and the lower you go on, there's less oxygen, right? So the bacteria, there are bacteria that can live on oxygen and they're gonna tend to be mostly inhabiting in the upper GI, right? But then there's a whole slew of bacteria that are anaerobes, meaning they cannot live on oxygen. And so because the lower GI is very low on oxygen, most of these anaerobes are gonna live in the lower GI. Right. So there's a lot of things that are going on here. Uh, so just to kind of just say we have gut problems and making a very simple thing is not really. Uh, and again, kind of leading into the thing about probiotics. Um, so everybody's on a probiotic kick. 
I'm not saying probiotics are bad or wrong when people shouldn't take them, right? But that's a whole other cl- complex subject matter. And uh, maybe I'll save that for next week, <laughs> the, the, the probiotic thing. But because uh, that's another co- you know, complex uh, discussion. And we kind of just turn to the probiotics to give us relief. But again, it's, it, it, it's way, yeah, I'm just taking a probiotic is not going to change. <laughs> we'll get into that next week. It's not going to change this whole system like that. It's just not going to do that. And, and then people often left very disappointed with the probiotic therapy and stuff. Um, but again, also in your gut environment, right? We call it an ecosystem or microbiome is we have, uh, again, different gradients. So when we look at bacteria, trying to make this complex subject matter a little bit simpler, um, let's just say that the majority of bacteria, the highest concentration is going to be down lower in the large intestinal of the colon, right? And so the diagnosis of SIBO implies, implies that a percentage, a higher percentage of this bacteria in the large intestine is migrating up into the small intestine and colonizing in the small intestine, right? And so then therefore what happens is when people are eating food, Right? If you have too much bacteria uh, in, this, in the upper GI, uh, then, the, then these bacteria can start to digest and break down or ferment foods that are coming in, especially you know, carbohydrate foods. Uh, and then they, by, by the very nature of that, they're creating a fermentation or a gas, right? And so that gas in the upper GI would make us feel uncomfortable, creating distension and bloat and pain, right? And that is kind of like the, the, the simplicity of, of really describing what SIBO is, right? But actually what's going on in research is way more complex than that. 